This video is all about Associated Board Grade 5 Theory exam strategy. Now on this video I'm going to be taking you through a single exam paper which is paper S from 2012 and I'm going to be talking about the Hawk technique H-A-W-C. Now H is for highlight, A is for approach, W is for work through and C is for check. So highlight, you'll see me highlighting all the keywords in the questions. Um, the approach, this is to do with not just jumping into each question but making sure you do know what you're doing before you start doing the actual work. Three, W for work through. So that's the moment when you actually do the question and you answer the question itself. And four is how to check your exam paper and the highlighting is really important for doing the last check through because it makes checking very, very easy. So the first thing we've got is highlight. I'm going to start by highlighting question one. I'm highlighting the key words in question one, um, starting with begins on the first beat of the bar. And the rest of it is making sure that I'm doing what the question asks, putting in the time signature um, at each of the places marked with a star. So each of the three places. So making sure that when I look back over it, I've got three changes of time signature. This is question two, intervals. Um, there's never usually much to highlight here. I'm just highlighting fully in each of the numbered intervals. If you've asked to write the interval itself, make sure you highlight whether it's melodic or harmonic. This is question three, transposing. Um, so to avoid common mistakes, I'm highlighting the direction down, the interval, major second, um, and remembering to put in things, new key signature and any necessary accidentals. This is question 4A. This is quite complex. We've got a bassoon and piano piece by Michael Rose. And there's a lot of questions asking to write in um, letters uh, where you find certain things. So the first thing we're going to highlight is capital letter, because that's how you show it, and bar number. Now, A's already done for you, um, so if we go to B, so I'm going to highlight in the bassoon part, melodic interval, diminished fifth, and bar number. I should really have circled, um, highlighted circle the notes concerned, or just circle. So C, bassoon part, slight emphasis to a note, bar number. The piano part, chord of C minor, first inversion, bar number. Similarity and one difference in the bassoon part and highlight the bar numbers. This is another fairly simple one that has a lot of potential for going wrong. So I'm going to highlight last bassoon note, um, same pitch, the type of clef, the tenor C clef, and things to remember, putting in the clef sign. Again, um, something that's really easily done wrong, rewrite the bassoon part of bar four in compound time. So again, highlighting the bar number and the part that it comes from. Um, remembering to put in the new time signature. So that's something to remember, that's really important. Um, the type of note, the brief, enharmonic equivalent, which is what you're doing, first bassoon note. This is question 4C. Um, again, this is fairly simple, um, just a case of making sure that you're answering exactly the right question. So bassoon, double read, bassoon, transposing, bassoonist, pizzicato. Um, the second half of the question is about families of um, orchestral instruments. So just because it's such a big question for very little work, actually, just highlight the relevant bits. Standard orchestral instrument, different family, bassoon part, same pitch family, which it belongs. Question five, this is scales. Now this question is, it's quite in depth. There's a lot that could easily go wrong just by doing something that's slightly different to what's asked, writing ascending instead of descending. So what I'm highlighting here is the key signature of five sharps, the direction, the type of scale, and things to remember.
This is question 6a. This is composing a melody for an unaccompanied instrument. I've got trombone on cello, so I'm highlighting that. Um, and I'm also highlighting to indicate the tempo and other performance directions and the length of the piece. Also, this, which is a little question which can often get missed out. This is question 6b, composing a completed melody to words. So here I'm highlighting solo voice, write each syllable under the notes, and again, indicating the tempo and other performance directions. This is question 7. This is the chord progressions and suggesting suitable cadences. So I'm highlighting the type of chords that I'll be using, each of the places marked A to E, and the fact that I don't have to indicate the position of the chords. This is question 1A. So I've looked at the highlights from my question. Um, begins on the first beat of the bar. I'm marking three changes in time signature and I've started filling in all the time signatures. This is the first half of question 1b. So the first thing to do is draw a circle around three consecutive notes. So that's highlighted, so I know they're next to each other and I know it's a chromatic scale. Next, describe the chords marked A and B as 1, 2, 4 or 5. It's given the key as G minor, which makes it really easy to draw out a little chart with the 1, 2, 4 and 5 on it. So if I do that first, it saves me time later of trying to work out where the chords are. So G, B, D, A, C, E. C, E, G, D, F, A. I'm not that worried about key signatures on the chart because the chart is just letter names. So here I'm writing down the letters in the chord. As you can see, I've got that one wrong and had to start again. So the right hand, left hand, sorry, has a C, the right hand has the E, and there's the G from before. So C, E, G, look down at my chart, it's chord four. Look to the bottom note, bottom note C, that's the first one, so that's 4A. Chord B, same process, write down the letter names D, G and B. So that's chord 1. Then looking at the bottom note is D, that's the second one, third one, sorry, so that's... This is the second half of question 1B. Um, rewrite the last left-hand note of the extract so it sounds at the same pitch using the alto clef. Remember to put in the clef and key signatures. The first thing I'm doing is looking at the last left hand note. So I want it at the same pitch, alto clef. Alto C clef, so that's the first thing I do. Remember to put in the clef, key signature. And my left hand note was here. This is question two, intervals. Um, so what I'm doing here, I'm looking at the, the first question, the highlighted um, number, number one. I'm writing down the note names, D to G sharp, finding the major key of the, um, the bottom, bottom note in the pair, figuring out the interval itself, which is um, a fourth, and then working out from my key signature, which I've written down, whether it's a major, minor, augmented, diminished or perfect. So going on to number two, again, writing down the note names, checking for accidentals and key signatures, um, swapping them around a bit because G sharp is horrible, so I'm lowering everything by a semitone, working out the key signature of G major. That's the third, using the key signature that I've written down to tell whether it's a major, minor, diminished, augmented or perfect. So going through three, four and five, what I'm always doing is writing down my workings. Now, this doesn't get you any more marks in exams, writing down workings, but it does make it easier for you to see if you've made a mistake, and it makes it a lot easier when you come back and check it. Now here I've written down compound 
in the first half of the answer. Fifth in the second, leaving a space in the middle for the quality. This is quite a lengthy um, piece of work as a little exercise. This is transposing music. So we've got here, the following melody is written for clarinet in B-flat. Transpose it down a major second, as it will sound a concert pitch. So what I'm doing here, I and mean, this is the approach, this is working out what to do before I actually do it. And to transpose it down a major second, I need to know what key it's in. Um, or what the key signature is at any rate. So it's G major, down a major second is F major. So that's the first thing I do is put the F major key signature in. Now, the first thing after that is just writing in all the notes down a second. And we'll sort out the accidentals as we go. That's the first bar. There's one accidental. So that's raised up by a semitone, so I've got to raise mine up by a semitone, which is a B-flat, so I'm raising it to a B-natural. Okay, next bar. First three notes, and again I'm looking at each accidental in the original and making sure it has a corresponding accidental in my version. And remember, the accidentals won't be the same but they'll do the same. Again, I can see two accidentals. There's my first one. And my second one is lower in the original note by a semitone, so I've got to lower mine by a semitone, which makes it a flat. There's two accidentals here. This is question 4A. This is three little questions where I've got to show bar numbers of finding various things. First thing I do, look in the bassoon part for melodic interval of a diminished fifth. So I'm looking in the bassoon part. Right, there's a fifth. 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 Is it diminished? No. Right, so that's my diminished fifth, so I'm writing a B at the top, circling the notes, and putting in the bar number. So C in the bassoon part, a sign that gives a slight emphasis to the note. So again, looking through all the bassoon, ah, it's easy to find there it is. Writing in the number, writing in the bar number. In the piano part, a chord of C minor in first inversion. So first of all, I've got to find out what a chord of C minor is in the first inversion. 
So those are my letter names, C, E and G. I've got to find out the key signature of C minor, so the relative major E flat. So C, E flat, G, first inversion, the E flat will be in the bottom. And there it is. I'm now looking for one similarity. There's my bars between bars five and six. And the last part, rewriting the last bassoon note of the extract. So it sounds at the same pitch. So I'm looking at all my highlighted words again, just making sure I've got everything. So tenor, C clef. And there's my note. This is question 4B and 4C. I'm starting off with a couple of questions um, with musical directions and metronome marks. Now, Next question, rewriting the bassoon part of bar four in compound time and then to put in a time signature. So I look for the bassoon part. There it is. The bassoon is in 4-4. Four, four. So this is the approach. This is doing the working out. So 4-4 four, four is four crotchets. So compound time is four dotted crotchets. Three quaves in each, 12, 8. Now the important thing to see here is that one crotchet now equals a dotted crotchet. I'm putting in a time signature. So the first crotchet beat becomes a dotted crotchet beat. The second crotchet beat that was in triplets becomes three equal quavers, dotted crotchet and the second two crotchet beats becomes two dotted crotchet beats. Right, so highlighted, breathe, and harmonic equivalent, first bassoon note. That's my E. Answering true or false to each of the following statements. Now here's that long question, which is really easy to see now. Standard orchestral instrument, different family, could play the bassoon part, same pitch, state the family. So actually I'm writing in the family first and then finding the instrument. This is question five, scales. So I'm looking at my highlighted words again, write the key signature of five sharps. And then one octave descending of the major scale. So my last sharp is A sharp, upper semitone is B, that gives me B major. Was it descending? <laughs> 
Right, check in five sharps, descending, major scale. This is the second half of question five. So again, it scales. I'm working out my key signature. I need to find the minor. So this is the relative major, E flat major. So the minor is... Down a semitone, down a tone, it gives me C. So C minor, melodic, starting on the bottom C to ascend. Right, so that's all my notes. Ascending, melodic minor, so melodic going up has sharpened six and sevenths. Quick check as a key signature. Checking through. This is question six. In the exam, you either do A or B. If you've got time, it's a good idea to do both because you get the most marks from the one that you've got the most marks on. So if you get eight in one and six in the other, they'll take the eight. So the first thing I'm doing here, I've looked at my time signature, three, four, and again, this is the approach. I'm just working out a rhythm first. Writing it above the staves, and you'll see why later, but this actually gives me room to write the melody on the stave itself while still having the rhythm that I worked out underneath. Six A. I'm working out the structure now. So I've looked at the key signature, which is F major. Found the accidentals, so we're looking at D minor. Now I'm working out some basic cadential points, which will give it um, a good sense of structure. So I've got a perfect cadence at the end, chords five to one. And halfway through an imperfect one to five. Writing down my chords, so chord one is DFA, chord five, A, C, C sharp, E. Finalising this now, so I've got my structure, I've got my rhythm. I'm singing this in my head as I go. What I'm trying to do is get a vague sense of um, direction where the first half goes up towards the imperfect cadence and the second half comes down towards an imperfect cadence. Now, if you look, I'm not actually writing in the rhythm. I'm just writing in the blob so I can see the shape without spending too long in making it all neat and tidy because I can add that later. And I've got the rhythm above anyway. So I'm looking at the chords that I've got written above, D, F, A, A, C, sharp, E, trying to think how I'm going to get chord 5. There's the A, and there's the E. I'm starting to come down from there. change my mind there I'm not having a dotted dotted rhythm it looks like I've put in a uh, triplet instead Looking for my chord five, here's my C sharp, my sharp and seventh, and finishing on the tonic. So now I'm going back through, putting the rhythm into the notes that I've written.
and now go and try and tighten it up. Looking at my instrument, trombone or cello, so I've chosen the cello. As my music rises towards the imperfect cadence, I'm making a crescendo there. Crescendo in again. finishing quite loud with a pause on the end. I'm singing through this in my head while I'm looking at this so I'm just putting in some articulation marks, some little slurs. And a down bow. That instrument, cello. So looking back through my highlights, indicate the tempo and other performance directions. I can see I've got them in there already. This is exercise 6B, so this is composing a melody to the following words for solo voice. I'm looking at the meter first which is getting the words to work within time signatures and bar lines. So what I'm doing is I'm saying the poem in my head. Um, and now I'm adding in the bar lines where the, the stresses lie. So only the actions of the just smell sweet. So before each of the, the stressed words, we have a bar line. Only the actions of the just smell sweet and blossom in the dust. Don't worry for now if the rhythm is hideously boring. All you're looking for is where the stresses go and where the bar lines go. So now I've worked out the meter, I know where my bar lines go. Um, I'm going to work out a, a rough rhythm. So the first thing I've got to do... I'm, but I'm using post-it notes. You'll get scrap paper in the exam. Just writing out the rhythm, um, the poem again. Only the actions of the just smell sweet as blossom and blossom in the dust. Now I'm putting the bar lines in, and the reason why I've done that, you'll see, is I've now got room, because it's big enough, I've got room to write the rhythm in, into the words. Again, nice and rough. So, 2-4, and I worked that out by, while I was saying the words, feeling the amount of beats that were going through in the bar, keep it to either 2 or 3. And it'll always be fairly simple. So only the actions of the... Now, what I've done here is I've put a triplet crotchet beat in there. So there's two syllables... Um, sorry, of will have two notes on it. So I've now got to work out how this is going to fit on the page. So I'm writing in my time signature. 
leaving room for the key signature I, I'm not thinking about that yet I'm again just working with the rhythm getting the structure laid out so again writing the rhythm above the stave the bar lines on the stave and the notes where they need to go below the stave they should really go a little bit lower than this, you'll see later, that it all gets a little bit cramped. So don't write the words first or the rhythm first, do them both at the same time and that way you'll know you'll always have room for any long words or any long combinations of notes. So I've now got my rhythm, I'm now looking at structure. So I've got to find a key signature. So I'm just thinking now, does this sound to me like a minor song or a major song? The words to me make it sound minor. I'm gonna choose G minor, no reason. Writing down my key signature, B flat major, writing down my relative major, then my key signature, and noting down what the sharpened seventh is going to be. So I've now got everything to do with key, and now I can write in my key signature, remembering to write it on the second line as well. So thinking about cadential points, again, having a probably a perfect cadence at the end and an imperfect halfway through. I'm working out my chords, so G, B flat, D, D, F sharp, A. So there's my one of five. And I've changed my mind. So I'm going to have a plagal cadence instead, which means I need to find out what chord four is. C, E flat, and G. Right, so that's my structure. So I'm going to start writing in notes, starting on the tonic and having a general rise through the first half until I get to my imperfect cadence. I'm slightly adjusting the rhythm as I go, making it a little bit more interesting. And again, all I'm doing is writing down blobs.
slightly change the rhythm at the end again. Still needs to be a triplet. Right, because the page is getting a bit crowded, I'm rubbing out the rhythm as I go now. see how close that is to the words. This is why I said I did it a bit too high. Changing my mind a little bit at the end. Now I'm looking at performance directions, my tempo adagio. This is question seven. So suggest, su suggest suitable progressions in uh, for two cadences in the following piece of music. Um, so I'm looking at my highlighted stuff, just making sure I know what I'm doing. So the first thing I've got to do is work out what key I'm in and work out what the chords are that I've got a choice between. So I'm in G major. So I need chord one, two, four, and five. So chord one is G, two, A, C and E, four, C, E and G, and five, D, F sharp and A. It's actually, it doesn't matter if you don't write the F sharp in, um, as long as you write in any sharp and sevenths if you're in a minor key. Right, so the first thing I do, looking at A, 
from writing in the note names C and E. So then I look at my chords. Could be chord two, could be chord four. Not sure. So I'll go to B, I'll come back to that. G and D. Now the only chord that could be would be chord one. So thinking about how cadences work, it's far more likely that that's going to be a plagal cadence four to one than a two one. So C, I'm writing down my notes, C, A, B, C, D, and E. Now when I look at that, I can see the triad of A, C, and E inside there. So that's chord two. Chord um, D, D, F sharp. The only thing that could possibly be is five. And the last one, G. More than likely to be one, to give it a perfect cadence on the end. So now I go down to my bars, um, dotted lines, and just drop them in. Dead easy. So I'm looking through the exam paper now um, and checking through everything. I'm using the highlighted words to help me with the checking. So I've, I've looking at begins on the first beat of the bar so that I've counted up the first bar. Um, I've highlighted each of the three places marked with a star. So apart from actually checking my answers, I'm checking that I've got one, two, three answers there. Moving on to question 1B. We start with drawing a circle around three successive notes looking for a chromatic scale. So I've got my circle there. I'm just going to double check that they are successive notes. Yep. Form part of a chromatic scale, yes. Right, so describe the notes and um, the chords marked A, B is one, two, four, five. So I've got my chart. Now I'm just checking through the chart very quickly. Chord one. So again, just checking through. I'm just write, rewriting out my letter names. Checking on the chart. Four, C at the bottom, A. Chord B. So again, just rewriting out the notes really quickly. G, B, D, one, and C. So last left-hand note of the extract. So I'm checking I've done the last left-hand note and nothing else. Same pitch, alto clef. So I'll check my pitch. Have I put in the clef? Have I put in the key signature? Yes. Right, so intervals, I've already got everything written out. So I'm going through double checking that I've got the right note names and then checking my process. So rather than doing the whole thing from scratch again, because I've got everything written out, I don't, that one's a little bit difficult to find because it's all over the place. Um, I'm just checking against my workings. So I'm checking my note names are right, checking my keys right. So the following melody is written for clarinet in B-flat. Transpose it down a major second. So looking at that, have I gone down? Yes, G major to F major. Brilliant. Right, so now what I'm doing is I'm going through and just checking the notes. I'm not looking at the accidentals now. I'm just checking that everything has moved down a space on the stave. So you can see I'm keeping my pencil in one place and my finger in the other so that I've always got one thing on each, one, one thing on the new and one thing on the old. Now I'm going through checking my accidentals. So I'm looking at the above accidental, the original one, seeing what it does and checking I've got a corresponding accidental in the um, transposed version.
Right, so I'm looking at the bassoon part. Melodic interval, diminished fifth, bar six. So I've already circled it. So all I have to do is go to that circled and just double check that that is indeed a diminished fifth. Just checking my key signature of B major. There we go. Um, right, the bassoon part, a sign that means give slight emphasis to the note. So again, I've got, yeah, I've got it in there. I'm just checking that it's the right thing. Piano part, chord of C minor, first inversion. So there's my C minor. And there it is, checking the note names. One similarity and one difference between bars five and six. So I'm looking at rhythm dynamics. Bars five and six. Yes, the rhythm's the same. And yes, the dynamics are different. Right, last bassoon note, same pitch, tenor C clef. So I've checked my clef, clef's right. And I'm looking for the same note as the last bassoon note. There you have it, there's my last note. Just counting up, making sure that that is indeed that E. Moving on. So, a la marcia in the style of the march, 100 crotchet beats to a minute. Right, so rewriting the bassoon part of bar four in compound time. Now, again, I've got my workings for the making sure I've got the right time signature. And I can see them at the top of the page. So apart from just checking that, I'm looking at my workings and making sure I haven't done anything silly. Right is a breathe. So again, check. Yes, it's a breathe. In harmonic equivalent of first bassoon note. So go back. Look for the first bassoon note. There it is. So that's an E. Right, so D double sharp. Right, I'm just going through this. Transposing pizzicato. Different family could play the bassoon. So this makes the, <coughs> the questions really quick to read and super fast to check. So write the key signature of five sharps. There's my five sharps. One octave descending. Yes, it's descending. Is it a major scale? Is it the right major scale? Yes. Semi briefs. One octave ascending. So check the direction. Melodic minor sharpened the sixth and the seventh given key signature, so let's just check I've got the right scale. Yes, begin on the tonic. Right, these are quite easy to check because unless you're gonna redo bits of them because you found something better, all you need to do is check the structure, check you've done everything, put it in the tempo and the performance directions, and make sure that there's, I think I was tidying up, tidying up the crotchet rest so it looks a bit tidier on the end there. Um, and checking there's the right amount of beats in the bar. And if there's anything you want to change, now's the time to do it. So checking tempo. Yes, I've got a tempo. Um, just counting one, two, all the way through. Make sure that I've got the right amount of beats for this. And again, if you've got enough time and you want to change things, then feel free. Now's the time to do it. Right, last question. So, checking my key, G major. I'm checking my chart, G, A, C, and D. And I've already got the note names written in, so I'm just going to double check them and make sure they work and that it is what I've got in the chart. So this is quicker because I'm looking for two, chord two looking for chord five rather than working it out from scratch and then just double checking that I have actually written the right ones in down here. So four, one, two, again using the pencil and the finger to make sure that you're following it correctly. And there we are, all checked. Um, right, so this is the, the approach that we've used. H is for highlight. So the first thing you do is highlight. When you're working through your questions, work out what you need to do first. So the approach is how to. That's all the background work. Then work through it. And then check at the end. C is for check. And use the highlighted sentences, the highlighted words to help with the checking.